Netflix's new animated series, Lookism, has got everybody thinking about how Lookism plays into their own life, Dave. Yeah, I mean, this is an anime, manhwa, whatever you want to call it, that's trending on Netflix, but it actually goes along with this global internet discussion amongst mostly guys about lookism because I think for the longest time, maybe only girls were breaking down looks and stuff like that. But I just seen like YouTube videos recently, four, five, six million views, 30,000 comments talking about lookism, IRL, and not just the anime. Yeah, well, you know what? We're gonna talk about it from an Asian male perspective because if you watch any of those videos, you will know that they always bust out the step. And statistically speaking, oh. short Asian men do not fare very well on the dating apps. In fact, they fare the worst in the Western world. Right, then, but they kind of leave it there, right? Yeah, because they're not Asian. So, you know, we're Asian, so we care. So we're here to break it down from a micro, mid to a macro perspective. We're also going to share some observations and tips we have at the end, okay? But this whole conversation was sparked by this series, Lookism, that I just watched. Real from- quick, so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. What is Lookism about? Because uh, not everybody I, I, watched it, yeah, right? I, all right, well, I'll play a quick clip of the trailer but it's kind of self-explanatory park hung suk is a unattractive loser who gets bullied at school right, all he's the short time. and he's fat. short fat and, and, and when i noticed when he's getting beat up and the the crowds that are watching they don't even have sympathy nobody feels bad right so he gets bullied and then he switches schools but the day before he switches schools he wakes up in the perfect body like i'm talking about just like amazing bod like tall he's athletic he's chiseled perfect hair right so let's just say looks wise and i'll make it simplistic for people he went from like a two out of ten or a one out of ten to a ten out of ten like i'm trying to think of a pop star that is that just the thing of the hottest pop star right now he's he becomes that right at school he shuts it down at his new school so he has all these different interactions anyways he goes down on this whole journey people get treat him way different right yeah he treats him way different and then he goes in and out of his old fat ugly body and his new body anyways there's some lessons to be learned. The last episode, I'm not going to lie, kind of made me tear up. At the end, the concert, you guys should watch it. Anyways. Uh, let's uh, get into the micro, Andrew. Is the show real? Because the whole show's called Lookism. Uh, obviously, it's a dynamic that I think is even more spelled out in the East than in the West because they're more comfortable talking about males' looks over there. Like, I think especially like they're more Korea. okay talking about male beauty in the East. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if, yeah, I don't know why. It's just a cultural thing. Um, But it's real, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean... Obviously, it's a anime, essentially, or a manhwa, or, you know, it's... A Korean anime, you're right. It's a Korean anime, so it's, like, really fun. It's actually pretty funny, but, uh, yeah, basically, listen, he gets treated way differently. The girls all look at him, and it's real, because I noticed that, like, depending on how you look, man, it can change all the little interactions in your life, right? And that's the micro, but I will say this... You know, because I remember there's a scene, because I watched one episode, where he even gets picked on as a good-looking guy... And it's very different than getting picked on when he was in his old, ugly, original self. He, because everybody starts showing him sympathy instead of, like, derision. He doesn't fight the goons anymore. He's fighting the other good-looking guys, which is funny. That's a little uh, subplot. And then, um, basically, I think this whole lookism truth really came about, especially with the age of social media, cosmetic surgeries, makeup, filters. Influencers. Um, influencers. Celebrities. The better health trend, the better fashion trend. So think about it. I think personally, the gap of being treated between being like considered ugly and good looking, IRL. yeah, in real life, is as big as it's ever been. However, now there are way more ways to look better. Right. So you're you're that's kind of some black pill thinking. I'm just. I think. I think today it's it's fueled by this. Yeah. yeah. I would say this. Um. I think previously when people would discuss why like guys are good looking, they'd just be like, oh yeah, that guy's just good looking, whatever, and they like. People would be like, oh, why do girls like this guy? People would just be like, oh, girls just like what they like. But then nobody was breaking it down. And it always seems so ridiculous to me that you can't break down why certain girls are really attracted to certain guys. But you could talk about why you prefer Android over iPhone or iPhone over Android for like 75,000 videos. Right. Like, right. I'm like, so wait. So something way more complex, like the human desires of the mind and the emotions and the hearts and the chemicals. You, we can't talk about that, but we could just talk about operating systems. Hey, why do you like that bag? Oh, I just, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like this, the color, the shape, blah, blah, blah. It fits well in my arm. Oh, why do you like that guy? I don't know. I just do. <laughs> right, and we're just supposed to accept yeah. that answer. Yeah. That's crazy. Moving into the mid, Andrew, um, I think there's an interesting discussion in lookism, the anime, as well as IRL, about looks versus personality. Personalities for looks, which one comes first, like a chicken or the egg type situation, right? Well, uh, it's tough to say, but I will say this. And I think this has been proven that 
whenever you do become good looking, if that becomes later in life, you grow into it, you glow up or whatever. Um, as we said, all the interactions change and that how you're perceived does affect your personality growth. Right. Because let's say you have a lot of positive interactions because you're well-dressed and you're good looking and you're standing in line. People always smile and people are generally nice to you or people give you like a little bit of slack or something because you, maybe you're just a nice person too. But then that is going to build on top of each other and then your personality might build up to be a little bit more confident in life or something Yeah, like and that. you know what I like about this series coming from Korea and Asia in general, which is hyper, hyper look centric, mm -hmm. especially East Asia, it is just like, you have to provide a photo of yourself on your CV, on your resume. Yeah. Like literally, they might just throw you out of the pile based off look off the rip. Oh. Obviously in the West, we have like, I think it's interesting in the West, everybody knows that lookism is real, but you're kind of like, it's taboo to talk about it, or it was. But in the East, people have been talking about who's pretty and not pretty for like, I don't know, like 50 years. I think in the West, you're kind of raised and taught that that is still bad. Even though everybody still does judge everybody's looks. But I think in Asia, man, sometimes it feels like, and especially if this you're around a lot of very traditional Asians, that like the parents raise the women, for example, to really care about the guy being just tall and, and have a good job. Just tall and have a good job. That's it. And then... But it, they don't say like, oh, make sure he's funny or interesting or has like cool hobbies or like can do this and that. Or, or you right. know, they just want to focus on like two or three main like metrics. For sure. Which is, can be and, very and shallow. And I got to say, I mean, uh, in the mid, like our family was not really like this. Our, like, no, no, our family we was not into looks because I would say this. If I was to provide an analogy, Andrew, if, let's say we were both part of ASAP Mob. You, would be, a, you would be more put in the ASAP Rocky position and I would be ASAP Ferg. Pretty Flacco. Uh, ASAP Ferg would have the grill and, and uh, Rob with the mob cra crazy personality yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess yeah but you know our parents didn't really raise us like that no they thankfully. weren't like they weren't my mom was like yeah 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 he's yeah. ASAP Rocky you're gonna be yeah. Ferg okay mom, so he gonna be the pretty one and you're gonna have be bombastic <laughs> mom did say just like stand up straight you have to look strong so she said that but she didn't really, really like uh, but yeah, I know some people they like to your point Andrew, everybody's family is different some people are raising those Asian families where it's almost like they're an extension of uh like a variety gossip show host. All right, David. So before we get on to the tips and observations that I think are very helpful for a lot of guys out there, at least good for our conversation, um, what's the macro of it? Man, the macro is that lookism is real, okay? But for if sure. we can, like, see it for what it is, it's just, like, the dynamic of the gameplay of whatever game map or like game we're playing. Like we always say Valorant is different from Overwatch is different from COD. You know how each game, yeah, they're all first person shooters, but there are the idiosyncrasies and nuances. Once you learn it and you accept it, okay, we play in Lookism Watch or whatever, you can then try to optimize mm. to see, obviously you have to look at what your character's archetypes are and personality traits and the VC points or whatever. But like but once you accept it, you can figure out how to work with it. And that brings us to our tips. Like we said, uh, I'm a guy who I feel like at different points in my life, depending on what circles I've been in or what like fishbowls I've been in, I've been like considered like the sub five. You know, when I'm around all the actors and models, when I'm on set or like when we're in Hollywood, I low, middle, high, I'm putting myself looks wise of the people who have a red camera shooting them in the low. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's that world. I have to go off the, 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 I guess the ranking power hierarchy of that fishbowl. But but it is helpful to know where you're at because different environments do have different metrics or different industries and different settings. Obviously, we're in media around a lot of influencers, actresses, <laughs> actors, models. We met them all and we know a bunch of them. Obviously, they're extremely good looking. Sometimes I'm like, yo, who are your parents, man? <laughs> <laughs> they have great frontal projection, lots of like great hair out there and stuff. So I guess it is important to know where you're at though. That's the number one yeah. thing. And that's... The tough thing is that, like, let's say you don't rank very high. Let's say you're considered unattractive. Are you a sub five? But, with but no you almost like, gotta know, but just enough for it not to break you. So let's yeah, go into yeah. some tips of things that could help people. And, and the reason these tips are relevant is because a lot of these like lookism channels they get like four, five, six, seven, eight million views a video. Andrew, when they mention something like Asian men are the least desired replied to by this type of person on the web, they they just kind of leave it at that. Yeah, right, right. Because they're not. Asian themselves, so why would they give, like, the coaching tips or whatever? Yeah. I think one of the main keys is, Andrew, is that all this lookism stuff is relevant if you go to a new city and you just log on a Hinge or Tinder, but it's not necessarily relevant if you're more, like, rising up the ladder of a, of a micro circle. You know what I mean? Like, that could be a completely different way of doing it. Let's say I'm at a hospital. 
I, I just got to be the best looking doctor. And you know, if there's nurses, I'm not saying whatever, like they value me as a doctor. I don't got to beat the models like in LA. Like, you know what I mean? I just got to be the, a good choice of the, of the people who are looking at me. Yeah, because you're in a system that values already what you do and what you're bringing to the table besides your looks. Right. Yeah. Or, or if, Andrew, we even saw people doing it growing up. Andrew, this is a crazy thing to say. It, hey, listen, guys, you tell me if it's problematic guys, or not. This, some, this, people did it at human. some people did it at church, bro. <laughs> we knew this one dude. I'm not going to say who he is. He was trying to be the church leader, and he would constantly date chicks that were out of his league in the church. As long as they were wholesome, yeah. spiritual, and God-led relationships. But yes, of course, guys, there's micro systems that will value certain things. Where if you rank high in that system, no matter what the other world, the rest of the world thinks, then kind of you get that bump. You know, and 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 women who are dedicated to the medical field or dedicated to the church, they're gonna value you and your position at the church or because right, the they're hospital. mostly like looking for somebody who, yeah. who's from the same circles that they're in. Yeah, I mean, I, another thing I, I will say this, and I and I said this recently is just like, like sometimes for some people, depending on your personality and how you look. It is tough to be around very traditional Asian thinkers because that traditional Asian thinking is going to be very blunt about who is good looking. Like, you know, you, some people have heard uh, parents in the past being like, oh, yes, my daughter's so good looking or my son's so good looking. Oh, he's so good. He's handsome. Like, my parents all, well, then <laughs> our parents didn't really do a lot of this, but there are some of their friends or people of our uh, you know, extended circle would say. Um, so I know they'd be gossiping like Joan Rivers yeah. does about like. You know what I mean? Like, it's funny because it's like, yeah, every... You know, you know anybody who's an immigrant, I'm not saying other people don't go through it too, but you dude, just know what I'm talking old about. Old people, you know, they're just like, come here and they're just like, oh, yeah, my daughter's good looking. Your daughter's... Son, yeah, put oh, them together. oh, man, my daughter's kind of fat. My yeah. son a little fat. Yeah, my, my daughter's fat. Like, so she she just had to study. I just make her... Shit, you know, <laughs> just like, uh, really like, uh, yeah. So I think... That can be, uh, it can, it can, it can weigh down on you. That's not. Yeah. Cool. So I think you just gotta know what fish bowls and how to move and stuff like that, and understand that it's like, okay, so we're in Lucasm Watch, right? That's the overall game. But your character that you were born, which you can upgrade and augment a little bit, uh, is better in certain game maps than other ones. Yeah. Right. Like, oh yeah, we in this different this game map this. Our character was better for this game. Yeah, game. changing environments, changing schools. Uh, another tip I would say is like, and this kind of goes back to what field you enter, as in like, I notice a lot of Asian dudes, they go into computer science engineering. We know this. It's a popular- A lot of Chinese guys specifically. Yeah, a lot of Chinese guys, a lot of Asian guys, but let me tell you this, there's not a lot of women in that field. Now, you don't pick a major just based on trying to meet women, right? However, you just have to know that if you're going into engineering, you're not gonna meet a lot of women or interface with a lot of women in your everyday life. Yeah. So I that's also think it's like, you're not even gonna interface with guys who, who prioritize women either. Yeah, I'm not saying engineers don't get women. I noticed that a lot of the guys on the internet who try to coach guys, they end up, they're like ex-engineers because they figured it out in a very step-by-step right, right. -step process way. Um, but yes, generally these guys, they, they're not like, they don't make it about their life because that's not a social field, right? And you're not dealing with women and having those interactions with women to build up your reps with them so that you can talk with women better and stuff like that. So yes, sometimes if you are a uh, underdeveloped, social skilled person and you enter engineering just so you know that that's a tough pick so i guess to wrap it up andrew you know i'm sure we could just list tips forever literally i think we did a video about mike cabellan's like uh asian guys struggle dating article and it hit like 150k literally i think andrew if we wanted to run a successful youtube channel strictly off this topic i'm pretty sure we could there's not what i want to only talk about i think the market is there okay. um so andrew do you think that like Guys that are really good looking, that are chads, the rare Asian guy with super good looking Western features or whatever. Like, is life super easy for them or does it just make things easier? What, what is the truth? Because I, mean, I think that most people logically, right, know that looks matter, right? I would say maybe 10% of people are like, oh yeah, looks only matter a little bit. Most people between the other 90% are distributed between looks matter at a medium impact level and looks matter at an ultra high impact level. And I think that's just the disagreement, high and medium. Now, I don't really think anybody could say that looks yeah. is at a low impact level, especially in 2022, 2023 with all this digital media, social media, cloud chasing everything. So well, what's the truth? Uh, I think the truth is it depends 
on what your expectations are and what type of family background you come from. If you are tall, rich, good looking and born from a good family and you don't want to achieve that much in life, yes, life will be very easy. I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's easy. That's easy mode. Even if you're a man, that's easy. But even if you're tall and good looking from a poor family and you're very ambitious, you're still going to have to work your ass off. A couple things might be easier. The doors maybe, might open easier, may, right? Maybe, maybe more people are willing to meet you or it'll be easier for you to find a relationship to hold you down so that you can work your ass off and not be frustrated in your dating life, right? Those things help, but no one's going to do the work for yeah. you just because you're a good looking man. The best way I could describe it immediately <clears throat> off the top of my head is like if you're poor, but you're really good looking, it's almost like you get better power tools, but you still got to build the yeah. house. It's like, yeah, somebody else got like lower tier, you know, the budget power tools from Home Depot and you got like the top of the line ones, which does make it easier, but you still got to do the work and lay the bricks. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to wrap it up there, guys. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comments down below what you think. What are some tips or what are some things you realized about Lookism moving into 2023? It's like, right. you know, we have surgeries. We have filters. We got Photoshop. We got poses we got lighting we got cameras everybody knows what to do everybody knows how to look good so i guess like i guess the question is is this gonna make everybody just step their game up everybody like yeah. like if you're not thinking about your looks at all in 2023 you're losing oh yeah i forgot one last thing you know where i see a lot of look is amanda is what? tiktok oh my. the level of joke and entertainment value you have to add as like a good looking like chad versus a sub five is tremendous. Yeah. The difference of value and See, production I, I value. I still think, I believe in YouTube, man, you still got a hard, you still got to add hard value even if you're good looking on YouTube. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I think also like if Asian guys, if you have no fashion sense at all, you should just like wear a suit and I think you'll get treated differently when you wear a suit. It's like for different reasons but just wearing a suit nowadays, uh, that's a good fitting suit. I, I don't know. I think you'll be seen as different. All in all, whether it's like the pill theory, it is that thing. I mean, I just think it's better that people talk about these things because personally, I know a lot of people that I grew up with, even in a way myself growing up, like I, I struggled with a lot of feeling like mm -hmm. unattractive, you know, to the opposite, you know. So it's like, uh, it's like, it is something that's worth talking about because otherwise people are like living their life in the dark. Yeah, no. And I do think I agree with your point previously like especially in this day and age you got to understand almost where you stand like you got to have an idea of where you fall like it doesn't it shouldn't break you you can't, it's not that you can't improve but have an idea because you can move on from there all right you guys let us know what you think in the comment section below let us know what you think of that manhua anime lookism on netflix right now as well and you know what do you think about lookism in irl until next time we the hot pot boys we out peace, peace.